You see that Bible? I love seeing that Bible. If you got your phone, you got whatever, you got hold it up there. We cannot enter into this world without fighting the battle. We have to have our sword. And I'll let you go ahead and say it as a church. Man. Praise the Lord. You're exactly right. Hey, uh, a few years ago, uh, I was on staff at a church and the pastor preached a sermon. And it was called uh, something. And I, I remember the sermon just a little bit. But I've kind of changed. I, I don't remember the sermon, but I don't want to take full credit for it. But it gave me the idea for today's sermon. Today's sermon's title is Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm preaching about tomorrow. Okay? Tomorrow. If you, if you would have asked me uh, 11 years ago if I would have thought as a pastor we'd be where we are today. I, I actually scared our security team. Uh, I went out in the parking lot. <laughs> and I walked the parking lot and I'm, thank the Lord, too, we have cameras here, there, there. We have cameras throughout the church. We have cameras outside. And you see the security team, they'll be on their phones and they are actually looking at all cameras so you guys are secure. But they saw me out in the parking lot, and they come out there running. The pastor's out in the parking lot and said, must be something going on. You know what's going on? The only two parking spots we got left are right here where they're cooking the food. Absolutely zero spots left. Zero. That's off with you, however, that is scary because you only grow to 80% of your parking because you might come today because we're having hog roast later on or uh, because your daughter was in the sign or the praise team or, or whatever it might be. But you're here today on a special occasion. Chances are, though, you will not do that every week. So we got to figure out how we can get some more land off the permit to have some more parking. So I'm going to ask you, my prayer warriors, to start praying about that. Okay? So then, also too, 11 years ago, when we, let's, let's transition to parking. 11 years ago, I pulled in here and I was praying all the way down through here and said, Lord, please, 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 have someone else show up besides my family. <laughs> and they showed up 11 years ago. Oh, Joy Zone, kids, you guys are out, you're allowed to go. Uh, I forgot that, so um, forgive me. You're allowed to go. The big classroom back there, you're this way, you're this way. Okay, those of you going to enjoy that. Okay, so as they're leaving, uh, 11 years ago I pulled in and all we had parking was this parking lot right here. And it was full. That parking lot was full. And so then we added some more parking, we added this out front, and then we added just a little bit here. And then we, remember, there was a ditch there from all the water running off of me to fill that ditch in. And 11 years ago, if you, just, if, if you told me, hey, this is where we're going to be in 11 years, I would have thought, hmm, okay, yeah. God knew. I didn't know. I was stepping out in faith. Trisha and I, we said, hey, we're going to step out in faith, and we're going to trust that God's going to uh, send some people, and, and we're going to reach out to people. Now, here's some numbers. Tyler, go ahead and run through those numbers. Look at this first one. 11 years, 200 baptisms, averaging 18 per year. Averaging 18 per year. Lives have been changed. Now, I can't tell you how many salvations we've had because uh, I didn't go back through the records this, this morning uh, going through the salvations, but God has blessed this work here. Okay? I'm a firm believer. God knew about tomorrow. Even when I didn't know about tomorrow, God knew what tomorrow was going to bring. It would have been nice to come in the first day and say, hey, God, go ahead and give me tomorrow now. <laughs> go ahead and give me tomorrow now. Uh, but we, we did that 11 years ago with the help of you. And uh, I'm going to ask you, if you were here for the very first service, would you stand the very first service? Very first service, just stand. Awesome. Praise the Lord. We couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> Those are the crazy ones who decided to stay. <laughs> now, when you start talking about tomorrow, you, you got to wonder, okay, what will tomorrow bring? You know, um, I sat there last night. Uh, my daughter, I, I'm, I'm promising you probably has bronchitis. Uh, my throat started bothering me a little bit, so I stay away uh, from the men's thing. But I've been out in the leaves all day, all morning, cutting up the leaves. And I didn't wear a mask or anything, so... 
uh, probably should have. But what's tomorrow bring? What's tomorrow going to bring? So I'm going to up a prayer and we're going to jump into God's word. Can we do that? Let's pray. Father God, I come to you right now. Thanks so much for your word and how to speak to us. So God, I thank you so much for yesterday, yesteryears, 11 years. God, you knew what tomorrow was going to bring. You knew today we'd be here being the sovereign God that you, that you are. You knew that 11 years ago, those individuals here that I didn't have any uh, idea who they were, what their names were, you knew they were going to be here today. It's not an accident. God, you're in control. And Father, you have used lives to intertwine with other lives and bring people in. And God, we give you the glory. It's truly you and you alone. We give you 100% of the glory, 100% of the honor. And Father, as we open your word today, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. <laughs> Father, it's all about you. We give you the glory. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, take your sword and open it up to Exodus. Take your Bibles to Exodus chapter 8. <clears throat> We're going to go to Exodus chapter 8. And we're going to look about an account that uh, happened, and it's, it's been the time, if you ever watch the movie, usually around uh, Easter time, you see Charlton Heston and the Ten Commandments and the plagues and things like that, and so if you've ever seen that movie, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to catch a part of it, just a small part of it, and you'll understand why as we get there. But we're going to start reading in chapter 8, verse 1 through 6 to start with, and the Bible reads this way. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your whole territory with frogs. The Nile will swarm with frogs, which will come up and go into your house, and into your bedroom, and on your bed, and into the houses of your servants, and on your people. And into your ovens, and into your kneading bowls, so the frogs will come up on you and your people and all your servants. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hands with your staff over the rivers, over the streams, and over the pools, and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered land of Egypt. Wow. Now, uh, we, we read through this, and there's several reasons why God does this. First of all, God was letting Pharaoh know that he's God and Pharaoh's not. Okay? The second one was, hey, I'm going to break you down. I'm going to break some things into your life, and so you're going to eventually let my people go so they can come worship me. And then the third thing was also a reminder to the Hebrews saying, hey, God is not forgotten about you, and he's sending these things to, to let this thing happen. So uh, that really why God was doing it, the plagues, and there was, there's more plagues that go on. But as a, as, a, as a child when I was growing up, um, years ago there used to be a bait shop on Water Street, and I love the fish. You guys remember the bait shop there for those fisher, older people? Okay, anyway. Uh, my brother and I, we'd go around and we'd catch night crawlers at night after it rained. We'd catch night crawlers and we could go sell them to them. And you make a little money about it. So I kind of grew up with uh, night crawlers and frogs and toads and things like that. And it really didn't bother me. Snakes are, I, hey, I'm not afraid of one snake, but like a million snakes, oh, okay. Draw the line right there. Uh, I think about the movie uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and they see all those, the floors <laughs> moving. <laughs> okay, not going in there. Anyway, one of them, I think I'm a little bit faster than that one. Uh, so anyway, I do love frog legs. That's good eating. Okay? I, I just, I, I could, so I'm not really afraid of a frog. But let's look at this picture for a second. Let's just look at this picture. God tells Moses to tell Pharaoh, hey, you either let my people go or I'm sending frogs everywhere. Everywhere. So think about this. We don't know exactly how long this, this plague lasted. But we do know that things happen. If we go back to verse 2, go back to verse 2, look what it says here. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your whole territory with frogs. In verse 3, the Nile will swarm with frogs, which will come up and go into your house. Anybody ever had a lot of frogs in your house? No. Okay. Uh, they'll come into your bedroom. And on your bed, 
Can you imagine? I, I won't, you know, I tell this story. My wife will probably not start laughing. But we lived out in the country, and we had those Asian beetles. Okay? Now, uh, you guys are a little bit older than, than if you know me. The, in the 60s, there was a movie called The Birds. That scared everybody. Uh, all right? All right, I know it wasn't as gory as what you're watching today. However, it scared me to death, the birds. So, uh, you know, Trisha and I, we lived out in the country, and I mean swarming. I mean, I was pushing the, 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 the uh, uh, Asian beetles off the porch with a broom. And I mean, it was like water. It was like sweet water. And they were everywhere. They get into your house. I don't know how they get in there. But literally, I would run from the car to the house as fast as I could. I'd say, Trisha, I call her, I'd say, I'm getting ready to come. I'll go up the door. Okay, get ready. Watch me, I'm coming. And I'd just, I would run in like, and I'd run in, and you carry them in. I don't know how they attach themselves. I, I was like a ninja. And they got on me, and I would get in the house, and they would, you'd be sitting there outside, and you'd go, all right? And it just drove me crazy. Literally, at times I thought about setting the house on fire just to get rid of it. I was laying in bed one night, and Trisha, she, she, I threw out my back and my shoulder. I was laying there asleep. I mean, sound asleep. And about that time, one landed on my face. And it brought me out of the sleep instantly. And I was like, "Whoa!" Ah, ah, I should have stretched first. I want to finish that. And I was hurting. Now that was just Asian beetles. Can you imagine frogs? Let, let's read the rest of that first. They, they, they get to your bed, into your house of your servants, and on on your people, and into your ovens. Hey, honey, I'm gonna cook some uh, dinner for you. It's full of frogs. Well, I just go over here. And I, today I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to need some bread up. And I'm going to... Whoop. Whoop. Yeah. They were everywhere. I mean, you could get rid of them. They, you, you, you make some flour and you're going to start to make your bread. Uh, kind of like water boy cupcakes. You know what I'm saying? All these movies are just coming. I can tell there's a lot of... Who's speaking speak the cooler? But anyway, <laughs> here's the thing. There were frogs in the food. They were in the oven. They, hey, honey, I love you. I'm going to go ahead and go to bed. You pull the light. They're underneath your covers. They're everywhere. In fact, the commentaries that I read said that they tried to get rid of them with fire. They, they tried to, to, to do anything. They'd run them over with chariots and horses. And the commentary suggests the way that was talking here is that as soon as they killed one, they got replaced with another. And no matter where they went, the frogs were everywhere. Could you imagine sleeping and all of a sudden, I'm just thinking of a little Asian beetle. I, I went crazy with that. Could you imagine that all of a sudden? <laughs> Land on your head. Go take a shower. Whoop, you look down there. In fact, you'd have to move them out of your way. The commentary suggests you had to move them out of your way before you could take the next step. They covered the ground. <coughs> I don't know how long that lasted, but I know the, the season that we had with the Asian beetles, by the time it got done, I was done. I was beat down the person. I called Jimmy to have him come out and spray to do whatever we could to try to get rid of the Asian beetles. And it only lasts about a week and a half because when they take down the crops, they kind of start looking. And so for about a week and a half, we had Asian beetles all over the place. I can't imagine what it would be like for frogs. I, I can't imagine what it would have been like for the for to go into the city and, and to see frogs everywhere. I can't imagine what it would like to be to go to the restroom and just want to you know, some alone time to get, and then, I, I grew up in the country, and I loved the sound of, of the frogs by the pond. I could hear them, you know, it was kind of peaceful. Could you imagine the whole land being covered with frogs and all those frogs croaking? You'd want to croak. 
not like they crook, but you know, you, you'd, want, you'd want it to end. You couldn't get away from them. So here's the funny thing. That surrounded by them, and then the next part happens. Let's go to the, the next verses, chapter 8, or chapter 8, verses 8 through 11. Look what happens. Look how our story unfolds here. Look, look what happens. And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he remove the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may sacrifice to the Lord. So Pharaoh has had enough. I've had it. I'm done. I get rid of Moses and Aaron. Get in here. Come on. I'll talk to you. You got to get rid of these frogs. I've had enough. Verse 9. Moses said to Pharaoh, The honor is yours. Tell me. When shall I entreat for you and your servants and your people that the frogs be destroyed from you and your houses, that they may be left only in the Nile? All right. And Moses says to, to uh, Pharaoh, hey, all right, here's the deal. Moses, you tell me. You tell me when you want to go. You tell me. Uh, I know you're going to destroy them, so there's going to be a little bit of smell about to deal with, you know. And they're going to be laying all over the place, and so it's going to be a big cleanup and everything. Uh, I've had it with them. But verse 10. Then he said, tomorrow. So he said, may, Moses said, may it be according to your word that you may not know that there is no one like the Lord our God. Verse 11. The frogs will depart from you and your houses and your servants and your people. They will be left only Finally, he goes, I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. And verse 9 right there, he says, okay, you tell me when. You tell me when the way will be done. Go ahead and tell me, Pharaoh, how much longer do you want to be at the cross? When I started reading that, I started thinking, hey, if I had something that I needed right away to get rid of the Asian Beatles, it would have been that day. I like to have that easy button, you know, Poop, they're gone. Hey, if I had something that was wrong with me that was driving me crazy, I'd want it today, not tomorrow. And I started thinking, okay, Pharaoh, how crazy are you? Are you kidding me? You want one more night with the frogs? You want another day with the frogs? I mean, if I if, if I knew Moses was going to say, hey, God's going to kill him right then, I said, okay, how about today? How about right now? How about getting rid of the frogs right now? I can't take it anymore. They're in my bed. They're in the, they're in the house. They're, they're jumping all over. They're in my food. I haven't had a good meal in a week. I want them gone. I want them gone. And so I started thinking, was he crazy? And I started thinking about you and me. I started thinking about real life. I started thinking about how does this world operate? A lot of times, but just like Pharaoh. A lot of times we get that same answer. Ever since uh, Trisha Skinner burnt me about my A1C while I was eating the donut, I started thinking about it. You know what I said? Listen to me. Chris, Chris knows I'm right. I, I, I was at work the other day and said, you know what? I really need to, you know, I'd like to lose about 30 pounds. I'll start that tomorrow. <laughs> Years ago, I used to smoke. You know, confession, uh, but I had for the bottom. <laughs> good for the soul, back for the reputation. Brain, you got to be inside here. <laughs> All right, here's go. You smoke, and I said every morning that's like, you know what? I'm going to quit these things, but I've got some left, so I'll quit tomorrow. How about this? Hey, I need to get a job. I'll get one tomorrow. Hey, I need to get my finances in order. I'll do that tomorrow. Hey, I, 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 need, I need to turn my life around. I'll start tomorrow. 
I need to quit having that affair with my wife and my, my husband. I'll have it tomorrow. Hey, guess what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior so I can have my eternal home in, in heaven. I, I'll do that tomorrow. I can't tell you the number of people that I've met in the churches and they say, you know what? You, you almost got me today. Pastor, I almost went for it. I'm going to wait and I'm going to do things tomorrow. I'm going to clean up my life and I'm going to get things straight and, and I'll get saved tomorrow. 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 We keep putting things off until tomorrow. What if tomorrow never comes? What, what happens, if, what happens if, if there's something that happens and, and uh, tomorrow is not here for me? What happens if tomorrow's not there for you? Well, take your Bibles and, and turn to James, James chapter 4. <clears throat> James chapter 4, verse 4. Mom, I'm going to ask you to do a search real quick. Find a verse on, who's got a phone that's got the search? Because I want this up there. Anybody got a verse? Uh, who's got the phone? All right, dig it up. Look for it. You're not promised tomorrow. You know what? I, okay. So here's the deal. 13 and 14 of what? James chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Thank you, Clark. I, I left the one off. Great, great, thank you. Uh, 13 and 14, sorry, Tyler. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit, yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a thing that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says there's a point in time for everything. The time for you to be born, the time for you to die. Over the years, 11 years, I can't tell you the number of sermons that I've preached for funerals. And many of those individuals were surprised. I preach sermons and I say, you're such a good help. My, my prayer warrior, I, I've used this one before. And my prayer warrior is Jerry Driggs. I don't know if anybody knows Jerry Driggs or remember Jerry Driggs. Jerry Driggs was probably one of the best athletes for his size and such good shape. He died. Just like that. His wife said, hey, we're going to run into town real quick. He says, guess what? I'm going to stay home and work out. He was left to wait till he died. They found him laying over the bench press. Oh my God. You are not promised tomorrow. I have no idea what kind of car you're driving. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. But I can promise you 10 out of 10 people die. You have an appointed time to die. Your life, you're here just for a little while, and then you are going to have to disappear just like a baby. So you say, well, I'll get saved tomorrow. You're not promised tomorrow. I can't tell you what's going to happen in the next hour. The only thing I can tell you is there is a God, and I'm not him, but he's got a home in heaven waiting on me. And if you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can have a home there too. You do not have to fear death. Amen. Let me show you what I mean. Take your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. 
if you are a Christian and you want to, let, let's just, let me line some of these, these verses. We're going to start off with Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 3, 23, and we're going to stay there for a little while. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Does that mean that the, the just the druggies down at the end of this corner? Or, or does that just mean the bad people that you know that you think have, have caused some issues that they got sin in their life? No, that means you and me. That means everybody in this room. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, guess what? You are born a sinner. You do not have to teach the children in the nursery to swap, to steal that toy from that other kid. They see it, they want it, they take it. That's covetous. That's one of the Ten Commandments. Okay? Hey, you ever tell a lie? You ever tell your parents, hey, I'll be home at, at 11 and you come in at 12? How about this? I'm going to be over selling to this house and they're really not. You ever tell a little, you know, well, it won't hurt them. Guess what? A little white lie is a lie. Right? Hey, how about, uh, I always love this one, verse 5, or the fifth commandment, to love, uh, honor your, your parents. If you do this, you'll live a long life. Everyone in here, one time or another, has dishonored their parents. Boy, I get mad at my parents, I get in trouble for doing something stupid, I close that door and I just... <laughs> you come back in here. Dad, you think you got big muscles? I'll show you. That door opened up. I got smart my dad one day. He was working with Kim with. He said, son, did you uh, cut the grass? Nope. Don't feel like doing it. What? He said, I said, I just don't really feel like cutting the grass today, Dad. He said, son, I, I'm about to tear off half of your head. I'm not done. Genius right here, okay? I go, what are you going to do with the other half? <laughs> Dad's quick. He said, You just hold right on there. I'll be right there and show you. <laughs> that motor couldn't start fast enough. I'll just tell you that. I was out on that motor. I could, every time I turn around, I look at the driveway. I was looking for Dad to pull in. I'm going to honor my father and mother. Hey, guess what? That makes me a sinner. I cannot live without Jesus Christ in my life. I have sinned. I need saved. You need saved. Take your Bible, turn to Romans 6. 6, chapter 6, 623. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Every person that is a sinner Someone has to pay that price. It could be you or it can be Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. The wages of sin is death. You are going to pay the price or you can accept his free gift of forgiveness for your sins. It's free. No strings attached. Okay? Let's go on to Romans 10. Romans 10. <laughs> 10, 9, and 10. 10, 9, and 10, and 13. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now notice it doesn't say you might be, you could be, you, you should be. If you, it says you will be saved. Amen. <laughs> Verse 10. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Something's happening to me, changed my life, and I'm confessing Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to tell you about Jesus, okay? Drop down to verse 13. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you are that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord. You can be saved. I'm not done yet. Take your Bibles. Turn to Philippians. You want to go to Philippians chapter 2. Verse 
Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. So that in, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, and those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord the glory of God Father. <coughs> if, if you found out that you had a disease that was incurable and that you were going to die and you had to change to get the cure today, or would you be like Pharaoh and ask for it tomorrow? If one of your family members was hurting, you know the family that you love so much, that girlfriend, that husband, that wife, that, that child, if one of your family was hurting so bad, would you want to help fix it today or tomorrow? Hey, if things in your life are, are so bad and you're, you're headed down the wrong way and things just don't look like they're getting any better, and someone said, hey, you know what? I can help you with that. Would you say you take the help today or would you take it tomorrow? Pharaoh had no idea that tomorrow was going to happen or not. All he knew was, uh, I know God wants the people. I got them. Frogs really aren't that bad. I choose tomorrow. I can promise you when you read Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, I can promise you beyond a shadow of doubt the day's coming when you're going to bow your knee and you're going to look up to Jesus Christ. Whether you're in hell, whether you're in heaven, or whether you're on this planet, you're going to look up and say, Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen. You can either do that today or you can do it maybe tomorrow. I want to leave you with this question right here. I have to that last slide. Are you willing to spend one more night with the frogs? Or do you want to choose Jesus Christ today? I'm going to give a hymn invitation. When I do, when I do this, I'm going to ask you to do don't do it right now. I'm going to have prayer, and I'm going to ask everyone to stand, to hear, shove those seats all the way in so there's room down the aisles. And I'm going to ask you this. Do you want one more night with the frogs? Or do you want Jesus today? You can come forward and say, hey, I want to trust Jesus today. I want to be a believer. I want Jesus in my life. I want to be a Christian. I want to be a follower. However you want to say it, I don't, I, literally, choose today Jesus or spending the night with the frogs. Maybe you're looking for a church home. My goodness, we'd love to have you be a part of this church. We'd love to have you serve the Lord right here. You can say, hey, I trusted Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I want to be a member of this church. You can come forward down the altar, altar and say, hey, I want, to, I want to be a member of this church. We'll have someone walk you to a room on both those decisions. Show you what God's word says. Have prayer with you. That you make that decision. Maybe you want to come to the altar and pray. So you know what? I got some frogs in my life. I got some things that no matter what's where I turn, whatever's going on in my life, if I turn this way, it seems like the frogs are jumping on me. If I go over this way, it's the frog. And I can go on and on and on. And you say, hey, you know what? What are you going to do something about it? I'm praying to God and say, hey God, 
That might get rid of the frogs in my life. I know. I know. When I cry out to you, just like Pharaoh had to cry out. At a point in time, when I stop calling on Jesus, he takes care of business. I'm not saying your life's going to get easier. I'm not saying, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to get a whole lot easier to go through that life and you got him right by your side. So, you choose Jesus today, or do you want one more night?